Hey guys, welcome back to LA Editor Alabama King, where my dad and me are turning our family land in Alabama into a commercial pecan orchard. In this episode, we're planning the irrigation line, clearing the land, and laying the pipe. The electrical company will also be out to place the power poles and wire the electrical lines all the way down to the middle of the property. Also, I want to thank two companies that help make my videos great. Signature tracks for their awesome music, and now Boris effects and the use of their amazing sapphire effects. I've used sapphire effects for over 20 years on the biggest shows on TV, like America's Got Talent, X Factor, MasterChef, Behind the Music, and on. Currently, I'm using Sapphire to cut the show Big Brother on CBS, so check out this season of Big Brother 25 and the effects in this video. Also, don't forget to check out the video description for products used in this video and special deals you can get from Boris Effects for following my channel. And with that, let's get right to it. So the property doesn't have any water, it doesn't have any power, and I just planted the trees on it. So that's what I gotta do. I've already had the water department of Rutledge install a water meter for me. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna attach an irrigation line to that water meter and run it about 500 feet to the edge of the property so that I can get water on the property. Then after that, I'm gonna have to connect another line to it, which will be my main line of irrigation for the pecan trees, and I'll run that about 1,000 feet down the length of the orchard. The water tower will be here, main line for irrigation, and then we're looking out over the orchard here. I marked where all the risers are gonna go, roughly 30 feet from the heads of the rows here to here. And I've got them going off into the distance. So that's gonna be the main line. Also, I need to bring power in. I've talked with the power company. We used to have a guy who was living on the property. His name was Big Man. Um, he was actually born on the property and um, my grandmother was like, don't you wanna live somewhere else? Like this is really sort of a rundown house. And he was like, nope, I was born in this house and I wanna die in this house. And so my grandmother's like, okay, fine. So he lived on the property, he didn't pay rent or anything. He just lived on the property and lived in that house. And he did have water, he had a well, and he also had power running to his property. So fortunately I had one power line on the property already. So all I need to do is get the power company to connect up to that pole and then I'm gonna lay about six power poles down the length of the property or the length of the orchard and bring power to where my Connex container is gonna be. We're gonna have the water here, right? But down this whole row, there's going to be uh, power lines that comes and then the power line's gonna cross the street and we're gonna have a temporary pole dropped right there. And that area, just so you know, is also gonna be the beginnings of a barn for me. It's relatively flat right here. And right here is where I think we should put the barn. And that's where the storage containers will go. I have two Connex containers, one on each side, and then I'm gonna have like a pole barn that I put the poles in between the Connex containers and then put a roof over it. And that's gonna be the beginnings of a barn for me. And then right here, I was thinking that I would curve the water here, right? And um, bring it up and stop the water line right here for the barn. So then the barn would have water. And the view from here, looking from the barn down is nice and pretty. It's central to the property. So any equipment we would need for anything, we would have easy access to it. And it's away from the roads and hard to see and surrounded by pine trees or, you know, cause it's gonna be tucked back up in there, like 80 feet, 80 foot square. Yeah, so that's that. So Frank is here and Frank just started digging all of the holes for each T in front of each row of trees. My brilliant idea is this. I've got this thing called a ripper. A ripper's like a big heavy piece of metal. It's kind of like a knife. You put it on the back of a tractor and it rips through the earth. And on the ripper, it's got a two inch tube on the back of it. My plan is to take the ripper, drop it down into the earth, have the tractor pull it through the earth. And as it's going through the earth, I want to thread 
my pipe, my water pipe, down through the top of it and have it lay under the earth so that I can cut a trough for the pipe, lay the pipe, and also cover up the pipe very quickly. Frank's gonna cut 32 holes uh, in one in front of each row of trees. I'm gonna run the ripper over the top of that. It'll allow the pipe to be exposed. I can cut the pipe, drop my tea in there, and bob your uncle. Anyway, that's what he's doing right now, is he's digging all those holes for that. But at the same time, he brought his bulldozer. I decided that I'm gonna put the Connex container in the middle of the property. And so he's clearing an area for that right now. They just push the trees right out of the way and let it pile up in a big berm. They were there for, I don't know, four hours, and this is what it looks like. I'm excited. This farm area, this place where the barn's gonna go, I don't know, I'm just super excited. It's cleared, it's ready. Now all I gotta do is order a Connex container and have it delivered, and then we're gonna have a storage facility on the property for the first time. First big fail, the Ripper. Look, it dug a trench, but I don't think it's gonna be deep enough. Actually, the idea works. It's a good idea. The problem is the land we're working on has a lot of clay in it. And that clay is incredibly hard. And I'm using this old tractor and the old tractor's trying to push down the ripper and the clay is so hard, it just keeps pushing the ripper back up. And the ripper can't go down into the earth. Now, if I had a few thousand pounds on the back of the ripper, on the top of it, as we were doing this, and I had like 100 horsepower uh, tractor that was pulling it, then maybe we could have gotten it done. But with the equipment that we have, it's not working. So uh, we had to figure out a different way. Fortunately, Brady knows somebody who has an excavator and we're gonna rent it from him. I tried. So I'm gonna have to get an excavator to come in here next week and we're gonna dig it out. This area where you see Brady taking the loader, it used to be trees. So there's a transformer on our property. Yeah. But there. we've got a power pole back there. We had a couple of trees in the way and we mulched this area to clear it so that the power company could get back there to put in a power pole. And so Brady took care of that and cut those trees down. And right now what he's doing is he's clearing away the debris that was left so the power company could get their trucks in here and put up the power line. Once the power lines are up, you don't really have to worry about it too much. The most important part is having a clear area so that you can actually set up the power poles, and then once they're set up, you don't really have to worry about them. It's progress, and things are looking really good. All right, I'm driving the cat. That's what it looks like back there. Brady's coming around, and I'm gonna get going. The awesome thing is the power guys are here. All right, guys are putting in the poles. This is exciting. The first thing the power guys do is drop in the poles. I believe the max distance is about 300 feet apart, and so they're installing six power poles. Installing the poles in the wire and turning it all on takes about two days. The first day they did the poles, and the second day they wired them up. See the guy walking? That's the foreman the boss of the crew, and he's pulling the power lines. The power lines are super long and quite thin and ultra light, which I was really surprised by. I mean, 
It's amazing how light the wire is. When you bring power to your property, they usually install one power pole for free for each meter that you're adding. I'm adding two meters, so I get two poles for free. And then each additional pole after that, I have to pay $150, which I feel like is a pretty darn good deal. <laughs> Look at that. Their trucks have no problem getting through the mud, but all that heavy machinery is definitely tearing up the road real good. Looks like they're going to lunch. Yeah, somebody's hungry. Brady, say hi to my YouTube audience. <laughs> Last time I was out here, Brady cranked up the tractor and I used it for the first time to spread phosphorus and lime on the property, which is something the soil test recommended. And that's what those old bags are on the ground. It had the phosphorus and lime in it. I gotta pick them up later. I'm telling you, I hate trash on the property. I just can't stand it. It was just a few hours later that the power company finished stringing all the lines and connecting the power. It took two days because of weather, but for the most part, they were in and out really quickly. And with that, we've come to the end of our video. Thanks for watching LA Editor Alabama King. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.